Hello, this is Carl, that'd be a nice guy, and this is part 8 of the 2022-2023 PC build. And this is the completed build, pretty much. Not running, but... Yeah, so in this video, we're gonna put this thing together. This is the finished product, pretty much. Um, and enjoy. So here we have it all in a pile. Now, I know people make fun of me for using this, but, you know, I'm going to use this for now. Um, I kind of want an actual Western Digital Black hard drive. But, at the moment, I just don't have it. Now, I might have it later in this video, because this is just the first segment. I'm going to try to make this as one build video. Under that, we have the Antic P5, that not many people like. But they're also not people that know how to modify a case. So I'm going to modify that case a lot. Um, I'm going to cut out holes for the fans. I'm going to open up these holes a little bit more. I'm going to even open up the filter front bezel. Now, the door, I can always cut a hole in the door. But I don't know about that. We'll figure out what we're doing with that. I'm going to cut the back hole. I'm going to cut the SSD holder underneath the DVD drive holder. And then I got fan grills that I could use one for the rear and I ain't gonna use them on the front. I got handles. I showed silver ones in the video of the, the case before. These are black. I might need to put some kind of reinforcing on the top underneath of them, like thick pieces of stainless steel or something. Um, power supply is gonna be ready. It's a modular power supply, so I won't really have to do that much wire management. Um, we got the DVD player. I'm gonna. That's why I wanted that case is to have a DVD player. I could have got the other Antec case that's called the X7 LT or whatever it is, 11. You know, it has no front door or nothing. It just it's just solid in the front. It just has this, like you know a sideways cold air hood kind of thing set up on it. So yeah, we have the case parts. Basically, the power supply and all that stuff. So, we got the actual system. This was the last part of the system that I just showed in the last video. Uh, I decided to get that because it's just a little bit better than the 3050. And the 3050 has found a new home in the 3930K box because uh, I wanted to use it for something. And I just felt that this needed like a little bit more power considering everything else has max power. Um, we got the Resin 9 7900X in this gigantic little box. Okay, oh. it's an oxymoron, but it's a very tiny processor. There's no heatsink included, but for some reason the box is huge. Scale-wise to the processor. Got the RAM, two sticks of DDR5 that hopefully work after laying them on the bed. Um, I have the motherboard that I just recently got pretty much after Christmas. Um, it was the hardest part to get because everything but this way the CPU had a Black Friday special so I was able to get that for cheaper significantly cheaper than the 39 the 12900 is that what that was at the time and the 13900 came out just recently too. But Intel is just crazy. Their, their fucking prices suck. Pardon my French. It's like they don't really aim at, like, you know, normal consumers for good stuff. They just make sure you spend a lot of money. Now, I'm not sure if I like NVIDIA anymore either, because they keep being kind of a-holes. But they're fucking stuff. Anyway, the, the fact that there's a lot more selection... I almost bought this the Prime, because I have a Prime board already in my home theater PC case computer at the apartment. And, you know, it's working pretty decent. Like, I don't have any issues with the Prime boards, but... This was just a little bit more. I mean, like, the other one would have been, like, 160-something. This is, like, 199. It's still much cheaper than a ROG Strix micro ATX board for the 12900, which was, like, 400 bucks. Plus, the stupid CPU was, like, 600 bucks. I mean, the prices don't make any sense. You get a whole phone. Okay, a whole phone does everything a computer does. Yet... A gaming computer costs me like as much as a car. It doesn't make sense. But anyway, 
everything's together and ready to go. I'm going to start mutilating this case. And yeah, that's the next part. So yeah, welcome to the video and enjoy it. Okay, so here's an addendum to the parts I got. So this right here is a, a video card jack. I'll show that as I'm doing the video, but otherwise it's in that box. These are the fans I'm going to use. I'm going to use these Noctua fans. A little bit prettier in a sense. I guess they don't have a little rubber fan, but it doesn't matter. But yeah, they, they, I know what's going to go in this case. So I got three of them for this guy. And yeah, we're gonna put these on. I got splitters, so I need it for something else. But yeah, we have a splitter that came with that case. It's kind of one of these guys. So all three fans are connected to one Molex connector. Yeah, so that's one extra thing that wasn't part of the original plan. And yeah. So what we also got, we've got a two terabyte 970 Evo Plus that we hope works. So we'll get that in there. And uh, yeah, um, it's probably the first time I ever used the M2 SSD. So we'll see how fast it is. All right, so here we have the P5. P5 has two USB 3.0 ports on top, so I don't have to worry about those. It's an off button. This is a reset button, actually, not a not for anything else. You got headphones and microphone in whatever order you want to see. I believe it's not hard to see, but I believe that one's headphones and that's microphone. Some other words I don't even care. You can see these or or sound cards. The front door. We're gonna modify this front door. So we know that the CD ROM is gonna go here. That's the, the filter, as you see, it's cleanable, but how do you get to it? So all that little grilling might be just cut away. Um, I'm not sure what I'm doing with that yet, but we'll find out. We're going to cut these away completely. It's kind of hard to see them, but I'm going to cut these whole honeycombs right out. And the filter. Um, the door in the one video is not going to be cutting holes in the door. Maybe I will. Um, but at the moment, we're not sure what we're doing. Turn this guy around a little bit. And we have thumb screws to take it off. Put them somewhere where I can't lose them. So on the back, we have that fan hole that we're going to use this grill. So we're going to actually cut away the whole honeycomb there and just use this simple grill. I kind of like these simple grills more. And I don't know. They kind of tell me that I built this computer in a sense. There's this, it's kind of like, eh, I think it's so we lose air vacuum in a sense, but I guess that's fine. In the other video, I kind of went over a little bit more things. So, we got these handles too. These handles. I'm going to put these on the top so I can carry it to places. It would be nicer if everything was lighter. Like, I could feel the weight of just these alone. They're pretty heavy. Um, the side panel just pops off like an old, old side panel. And the side. Oh man, why is it heavy too? So whatever's in this panel makes it really heavy. This sound deadening material, I don't know if you can see it easily, but it's like a, I don't know what that is. Some kind of, I don't know, cloth with something in it. But yeah, it's not even gonna stay there because I'm gonna put a window there. Okay, so yeah, we got the inside. We have spare parts. Um, and those spare parts. Let's see the wire connector. Got 
stay open. So we got a connector for the fans. Bag of screws, a little speaker, and even USB rubber cover things, which is kind of nice. It came with some zip ties and some extra rear shield covers for the um, expansion bays on the back. These guys, if you don't want to use this little popping plates, which I'm probably going to take them off. I think I got it. <clears throat> so, this is a micro ATX case. That's what I have on my current ATX board, so there's no issue there. It has this hard drive thing on the bottom. I kind of showed in the first video. It's just, you see it. So we're gonna do something about that. Um, I'm gonna take the front bezel off. And other things. Actually, yeah, I'll just take the front bezel off right now because it's kind of hard to see in a black case anyway. So after some finagling, I'll try to get this out. It has all these spaghetti wires that help things. Um, they're originally all routed behind here. So they are routed from this hole through this little hole right here. It's a good behind. So you can hide all your wires. Yeah, so this is the bare bone frame structure. And bays. It's a lot easier to see everything more open. Um, this one's perfectly straight and perfect position, but this one's a little arched. So, yeah. Plastic, plastic parts. So, yeah, let's get to doing what I'm going to do. I just took everything out of it so it's a little easier to cut it and clean it at the same time. This bottom thing with the honeycomb is going to stay. There's a screen right here. And I went over in the actual part two or three or whatever. That kind of helps filter that. Um, the power supply, I guess, is sucking into it versus blowing out. This is where actually the hard drive caddy was. And there is two places for it to go, which is nice. It can move up and down, but it's not really something I want to keep in here. Okay, so we cut the rear grill out. Well, I initially cut it kind of so it's inside the, there's like a bulge sticking out. But yeah, I just cut the whole bulge off. So it's just kind of like that. The fan will have a grill, and then the fan itself will just be open at the top and bottom. It doesn't really matter. I just find that this adds too much restriction. Uh, also, you can use it for projects. So it, <laughs> It's nice to have all this for other things. Um, the other side, I'm just going to cut out basically the same way. But then I still got to drill my holes and other things. This one, though, it might keep the bulge just because, um, eh, I don't know. But yeah, it's coming out. And there you go. Cut that guy out. I had more of a general idea what I wanted to do, so I just cut the whole bulge out. So now I just gotta file it up and I'll show you the finished product in the house. Okay, so I'm back inside. Drilled the port holes for the handles. The rear hole is nice and cut and cleaned up as best I can get it. Front hole is nice and cleaned up too. pretty uniform. Not too bad. I've determined that I'm not going to use the hard drive bay. Okay, so the handles are on. They're secure. They're really secure. Um, they're goofy metric screws because IKEA is all metric. Meaning like there's some different size than even what bikes have so they're a little bit smaller. But I had to cut them shorter and re-thread the ends a little bit. But they're on there. We got those on there. Uh, I added the sticker. It's a Tough Gaming logo sticker. Um, it comes with the packet of stickers that 
come with the motherboard I'm going to put in this thing. Uh, so yeah, we're going to cut out the window of this door. Um, this is plexiglass, something I got at Home Depot. And I already marked off the spots to cut. So I'm going to cut this out. And I'm going to cut the hole out in um, <clears throat> the metal. Uh, I, I guess I got to undo all that sound deadening stuff first. Got to clear. But that has to come off. The hole is going to have to be a little bit further forward from the back so the fan can't interfere with the window so much. Um, it's a pretty close distance there. So we'll, we'll see how that works. Um, now I just want to cut that out first. Get most of this stuff done that's involving cutting. <clears throat> and then I'll put this thing together. Uh, the front bezel, I do want to cut holes in it and everything else. So that's got to be done too. So we'll get that done. But yeah, let me just cut this piece of plexiglass right side before we even get started with the door. Yeah, you get a nice blind. Okay, so there is the window cut out. You got a goo going all the crap off the back of it. <coughs> I had to literally tear most of it all just to make sure I can cut. There was some serious stuff on that thing. But it gives you another piece of metal to kind of work with. And that's the clean it up, put the window on, and it's set. And then, yeah, the front bezel. Okay, so before I even finish the window, well, I just add a sticker, but there are little holes inside the front bezel. So that's ready to go back on there. Um, I need to get some double sided tape for the window. But yeah. I'll get this front bezel on there and I'll show with that. So I've got the bezel on, snaps on. There's these six push rod type pieces. I can still get the fans on off, that's pretty easy because when you open up you can actually get to the holes of the fans. So if you look at it from here you kind of see there's more light shining through. I only did it here because of the fact that the CD-ROM is going to be right there and it doesn't really do that little bit. It might help a little, but it basically just acts as a baffle, and then the fans probably need like a PWM to really see any points on this. But they're just round drilled holes I put on the side. There's reinforcing pieces that are in there I can't drill through, so I just left those blocks in place. Um, otherwise, it looks fine. It doesn't seem to be structurally destroyed or anything so yeah that's out of the way the front filter on the other hand is going to be a little bit of time but i'll do that a little bit later too but let's literally start setting this up so i want to get the cd-rom in there i want to get you know, wire to push through i don't want to this hole that'd be funny okay well I'm gonna mess around with this a little bit and look for a seat around. Okay, so we have <clears throat> this Asus CD ROM. It's a green edition for M Disc RW DVD. -R. I can't live without one of these things. I don't know how people don't want to be able to do that. But it just goes right in. It should just slide right in. One handed, no less. Let's push that guy in. We get it to be right about the edge. That should be fine. We look at the side. See where these screw holes align. So yeah, that's pretty easy. Look for some screws. And they should just thread in, but you might have some issues. Do I need more than two? It's a good question. You technically don't. Unless you have you're moving a lot, you're gonna not really need more than two. You, you can get away with just one, really. Or four. There's um, two on each side. 
keep it steady. So we'll just get them started. So yeah, it's right where it needs to be. Maybe just align it. So it looks even in the hole when you look at it like here. That's something that I think of. We'll do that in a second too. So it should actually line up right if we just put these holes down. So all these wires that you see right here, these are the front or top panel things. Um, I think I went over that before, but we have like, you know, two USB 3.0 ports, headphone, and microphone. The reset button, they can actually change to be used as your light aura adjuster. And then you have um, that, because I have another case that seems to be able to do it like that. Um, so you just like throw it in and just snug it up. It seems like it's still uneven looking, so I'm gonna try to raise the other side. But we'll snug up this side. Uh, these are just more difficult to do with one hand, that's all. But we can definitely get it. Some dexterity. Let's get it started. Try and do some way offhand. Which is my, okay. We'll just pause this for a second. No, we, we stuck up the other side. That's fine. We'll just try to lift this up a little bit. It might need to be finagle a little. It, it just yeah. We'll just mess with that for a second. Okay, so they're, they're stuck up. It may show a white back on there. You can always add a sticker, you know, it don't really matter. I mean, I can put the tongue game in a sticker or whatever or something. It doesn't really bother me. We got the CD-ROM in there. It's definitely not straight, so I'll mess around with that over time. <clears throat> I think the main issue is, like, you try to straighten it out and... You just don't look at it like it's covered. Like so... Oh yeah, we got the CD-ROM in there. I'm a big fan of PC power and cooling. Um, <clears throat> this is no different than any other PC power and cooling. They give you like a thank you card. All the wires are in this little backpack looking storage bag that is pretty nice. The power supply itself is a good it has this humongous fan. It's very, very heavy. Blue decals, which is anything that sucks, I guess. And with this, this in particular case, I can just point it, the fan that you see down there because it, that's where it's going to take all its air. Um, I can put it upward, but then it's kind of taken away from the video card's air, in a sense. That's why I don't really like the fan where it is. But, you know, when we started making cases with the power supply on the bottom, like the Antec 300, you start realizing, like, you gotta have an intake on the bottom, or at least this direction to make sense of it. And I just bolt this guy in. Um, the point of the matter is that it's modular, so we got, we're gonna basically just use what you can't see. One PCI Express slot, the CPU, maybe two. I looked at the board, I think it has a four pin and eight pin connector. I don't know where I'm gonna get to the four pin connector anymore. Um, this is the motherboard connector. Or this one's the motherboard connector. So we actually have three PCI Express connectors and these are all PADA SATA connectors. Um, meaning, there should be, 
Well, I'm not even sure this thing has molex. Well, we'll find out, I guess, later on. Let's just get this power supply in here. Um, I don't really have to worry about static. Let's just see if anything at the moment, because everything's shielded with a nice box in this case. But, you know, that doesn't look too bad. That doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, yeah. Let's bolt that guy in. So this one probably is going to require more than one hand. Um, because when does it ever not? But we'll see. So these screws don't seem to be long enough, or this doesn't seem to be big enough, or something. That's not a hole. Okay, well that's the hole right there. On the screw. Looks like the screw is here. It's kind of hard to see. Myself. I'm going to move it sort of the light here. It's just kind of hard to see screws when they fall on the ground. So we'll just, we can move the table in one hand. Yeah, I'm not sure it's not falling off. Okay, so that looks like a screw hole. The thing is, at least everything's black, like even the screws. So, you don't see it. <clears throat> it doesn't look gaudy in a sense, but, you know, I like silver, so I don't know. Snug that up. I don't twerk them to death. I just get them kind of like stuck. You know, they don't have to be torqued to like 10 foot pounds or anything. It just put them on. It's a, it's a computer, not a engine. So, yeah, it has an on-off switch like anything else. Yeah, so we got the power supply on there. Um, the wiring, well, all, well, I think that our intention was to go through this little hole. There's just no way. That just, maybe one wire can go through there. But everything else is going to have to go, like, around this. Um, the PSU shroud might add a little bit of complication. So, we're going to say... I have to drill holes, so I'm gonna have to take everything apart just to do that. At least that. But getting in there before the shroud is probably the best bet. So, but the size of it doesn't look too bad. We got a little bit more airflow coming through the sides, but yeah, we, you gotta open the door to really have maximum airflow in this case, which is kind of weird about it. But yeah, we moved along. Okay, so now that we have the whole shebang together and cut up, we can get these fans in here. So we have these Noctua fans. They're a little bit prettier than those red fans. Well, actually, the red fans are pretty nice, but the problem with them is um, I can't really find them anywhere, and I was able to get two. They're new, and um, they're expensive. These ones, they were like thirteen dollars each. <laughs> These are the thirteen hundred RPM guys. And they should match the tough gaining set up pretty good. So I'll just get these guys on here. We have the rear fan grill ready for action too. So yeah, let's get that started. So yeah. We'll do the rear one first. I'll just turn this a little thick on there. To kind of get that in the screen. So the way this is going to be mounted is that I'm going to put the wire up this way. So it could be this direction. Aesthetically, that's fine. Um, the basic problem is that the sticker is upside down. That might be something you can just peel out after you put it. Those tough gaming decals that came with this thing, maybe they can put that on there instead. I don't know. I just, um, it has to go on there like that. It's just a little easier to pre thread the plastic. So we just need the grill that I put somewhere. So, um, the grill, I kind of want it to face. This way. Right, that's 
started. that start on her. Align this one. I'm not really aligned whole wise. So yeah. That'd be easier like this for me. <coughs> So the reason why I go with this kind of grill is that it's definitely less drag in a sense, so there's less airflow blockage. Um, I just don't like making it so there's still holes here. Like all the holes were kind of like in this general vicinity, so I don't really want to see just half those holes. So once like yeah, they're all in place, it's tight on them. That's it that one I don't twerk them too much just snug them it's just plastic so it doesn't need to be a certain foot pound um to make sure this is faced a certain way that matters to you uh yeah so we got the wire which is like a turntable and the wire will go right up into this little groove it's completely out of the way. Um, it's probably going to go up over this actually. And there we go. Jang the tells there. So, let's get this out. Let's get it out easily in the hands. But yeah, it's up underneath there. You can't really see it. Even I can't see it because it's black, but it's up there. See the wire just goes over top of the IO shield piece. So now we gotta get these fans on the front. These fans, I'm gonna try to make it so the wires are kinda like that. And they're both like this way. So that way, you know, it's easier to figure out where to go. We'll start with the bottom one, I guess. It does seem very dark. But there's a wire opener right here on this case. Sitting there like that. And yeah. Not much light face in this one. Let me like move the camera. Okay, well, it's a little bit more light that way. I think not having the cover on probably better. But it just sits right in these holes. Um, I do like, like I said, with the other one, I, I kind of find it more cumbersome to start thread the holes and the front one is not so difficult there's no grill in the way I'll try to get all these holes or screws in place So, I, I don't know. <clears throat> I tried out those bag of fans and it did look nice. But the fact that, like, nothing else is bright on the computer makes it so you know, look, it just looks too bright compared to everything else. So, I kind of went with these. It's either these or mustard yellow, which is something like that, but it doesn't seem to be like anything like that. Okay, so, I'm just putting the screws in so they're holding the fan in place. Is 
I might have to shift it over or something. Just get them all loose fitting. We got this fan. We'll put this fan on there too. Try to get this fan on there. Go through this hole to the back. And it's probably hard to see with that because it's hard for me to see with that too. So it's not like it's. camera's fault, it's just the fact there's no light. So this one's going to be sitting here. This one needs to be in there. Just stuck in this hole. Just this fan originally had a 140 fan, and I could have easily just made one big hole for that, but I just don't really... I kind of like having two 120s over one 140. If it was two 140s, that'd be different. I don't know, I'd probably like that a little bit more. So this is going to stuck out now because it seems to be kind of where you need to be. I don't really see any alignment issues, so just snug up all the screws. There's no room for stretching the fans. Get the fans in there. So they just sit in the side like that. Um, that one sits like that. We did have a light to make it a little bit easier to see. But yeah, we got all that stuff. Okay, so here we have a Be Quiet bottom shroud. It has all these fan openings and a lot of modular pieces come off. Now it's a little bit long. Just a little bit. So I have to cut it down. Okay, so before you even cutting it, you can kind of take a look at it, get a general idea of where stuff is. So that's about where the back of the case is, right? And then, yeah, so it'll be pretty close. I already got a general idea where that needs to be. We just know we need to figure out a way to get that front fan to have, you know, an airflow into the case, not just into a hole. It's also all black, so it's hard to see, but you get the general idea on what that's all I'm gonna do. Anyway, before I even got into that, I put the window on the case, side panel, so it's on there. I just use double sided tape, like so. Um, it's really strong 3M double sided tape, like industrial strength. It's just basically the RC car mounting tape that you would use for your receivers and radio gear and RC cars. So, so with the first raw cut, we got that guy. It's gonna sit basically right there. It doesn't have to go all the way up against it, but I'll give it some leeway to play around. Cause it kinda needs some gap or it's just gonna either vibrate or something. So now we just need the other side. Okay, so we got that edge already cut, right? Well, we cut this edge. I kind of had to make it like that. Because there's really no way to get it in there without doing that tipsy tipsy. There's enough space and a nice square opening. Let's say it's starting to look nice. Um, yeah, I'll just cut that little piece and we'll see how it fits after that. Okay, so here we go. It's all cut up. Drilled. A hole saw drilled the one hole in that plate for the back wires, you know, like the IO shield or, you know, the stuff. All the wires for those guys, the one-off plug, the 
front panel audio is USB 3. That hole right there, that's for the video card cable. Um, that square that was over here, I cut it in half. Um, I cut the whole front area out, cut the whole rear area out, I cut this one plastic piece that used to look like this guy, which used to sit over here, you know, like this. I cut that so it's flush fit. Made this little bracket that since these screws holes are already on the front, um, they actually have uh, threads, so I'm able to thread the screws right into it. This bracket is just cut from a black piece of metal that was on another case that I made years ago. So I can clean up a little bit more, but otherwise, let's just see how it looks when it's in there. It's a little difficult. Generally, it will sit like that. So I just got to align that front hole. I just made there's one screw there, so it's a little easier to take off and put on. <clears throat> and in the back here, there's three holes here that I drilled. These two and that one. All the other screws kind of, the screw holes are in the back of this. Um, they'll either line up with like this which doesn't really help me so much. So I just made sure there's three screws holding the back. It doesn't need that many. It's not supporting any weight. It's just covering things. So it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so let's get that power supply back in here. And we'll even plug in all the wires just to make that a little bit easier. Okay, so the problem with this one is kind of, yeah, it's modular, but their intention is that fan faces up. So we have one PCI Express right there. We have motherboard connection, which is this whole thing. CPU connectors. And we have PCI Express connectors here too. And then the rest of these are for like, you know, CD-ROM, hard drive connections, Molex connectors, whatever. They're all basically the same right there. So we can start with this guy's got unwrapped. Okay, so it has two connectors here and a 24 pin connector on the end that goes in the motherboard. Um, obviously the smaller one is this one. Uh, there's a little slot that the snap piece goes into so you can't really go wrong there. You can't mess that up. You have to click, put the, the other one in. Since it's black, it's very hard for me to see in the camera, so I don't know if you see it either. So we'll just try to get that to click. It should click. Okay, so we'll get these other ones. Sorry I'm doing this on the floor, but yeah. So we have connectors. This is a CPU connector that has two four-pin connectors. We actually need, I think, one of these four-pin connectors for that motherboard anyway. So we're going to use that. Where's that going to connect? That's the real question. Oh, okay, so we got, uh, which one looks longer? Uh, okay, we'll just put this one here. The other CPU connector, which I don't know which one's which. Um, I guess the connectors are different on both ends. So why am I connecting all these wires to it right now? Because when they're in there, and they put that shroud on, it's going to be a complete pain to get them on. So this is this is why I'm doing it now. Um, at least these are single ends, you know, on these ones. And then you look at these. Well, the video card's a single end, technically. So this is the video card cable. I'll just put that in this one since it's pretty easy. Um, but yeah, these are single end, technically, to the, each video card connector. So you got two rails leading to one video card right there. That's pretty nice. Why can't every other modular power supply maker do that? I'm going to not say any names, but let's say they have a, a sale as their 
logo. Uh, I don't know. So we're looking at this one, which I'm not sure what's going on with it. Okay, so this has Molex plugs. And this connector can go anywhere. It really doesn't matter where it goes either, meaning I'll just put it all the way here. So that way, if I do have to add things, it's just so much easier the ones closer to the back of the case to get to versus the ones all the way up here. So I didn't seem to need this one. There must have been two on that one little wrap. So I guess let's throw it over there. This is the SATA cable for the CD-ROM. As you see, it is a daisy chain, just like the Molex one, actually. <clears throat> but connect that to here. I only think it connects to it. So even though it's a modular power supply, we still have a serious amount of spaghetti. Uh, it doesn't go anything. It's just that's a drive cable. So yeah, we got that all right there. Now that this got to go back in there, we got its power supply screws. And we'll get that back in there. And then we'll even get that on there, so <sighs> it's finally getting together. I don't know if you know how long this is from the last part of the video earlier, but I took a two week hiatus just because of the fact that, I don't know, cutting that thing up and drilling holes was just beating me up. Even though it's a very simple job, it's just, it's not very simple when you have other things to do, other bikes to build. So it might've been three weeks ago or four weeks ago, maybe a whole month. Who knows when I actually got that guy and then everything else was like, you know, a full year ago. So yeah, we'll, we'll push this guy in. Um, yeah, I'll just show you it after it's pushed in. Okay, it's just pushed in there where it needs to be. We have to figure out where it was here. And then I still can't do it. I still can't do it with one hand. We know that. Yeah, I was in here before. <laughs> we can't really see it this way either, so um, maybe I'll move it. Or spin it around maybe, like this. It's not much better, but yeah. So this power supply actually came with these thumb screws. I didn't even notice they were in the bag with all the wires. So we're gonna put them on. And I can't see him in the screen, so you probably can't see him either. Anyway, snug them down. One. Did I say a PC power on one is probably the most underrated power supply company and they're like the best one out there the size of that coil in there okay so that's on there you may notice that uh, yeah this is sitting here so I can find it um, it's a lot of spaghetti to tie up still which is kind of what sucks about this I mean, what's the point of modular power supplies if there's so much but freaking cable? So we'll get this guy in. Um, should this go right in? Like so. Yeah, okay, we'll just make sure everything's lined up. There's a hole there that should be lined up. These may not even line up, but we'll find out. So. Spin this around. Okay, so we got a back view. Um, this is the splitter for all three fans. 
I got all these cables to basically gonna go right to that hole and then right out that other hole. So that's gonna be fun. We have to tie up all the spaghetti. And I never understood what's going on with computer designers. I just know like they they somehow have hits and they somehow have misses and these modular power supplies are seemingly a complete miss. But yeah, I'll tighten all these screws for the shroud anyway. I can't even do it with this hand. I mean, there shouldn't be much effort. I should just start with it. I think this one's probably the harder one because it doesn't seem to want to tighten it. too close or something but yeah that's what's holding the back those three screws and we'll mess with this after we get the motherboard in there okay so I guess I'm lighting that guy but we just have a nut and bolt coming through the bottom for that front that is more than stable enough you can't go anywhere it's pretty stiff this is what this cable is going through so, yeah, we have the PCI Express cable in need, which is just one 8-pin connector, fortunately. Um, but I'm pretty sure I can get a second one through that if I finagle it. So, it's not too hard. Uh, yeah, all the front panels so should easily get through that hole to the motherboard. And now we can actually get the motherboard in there. So I did an entry to the board before, but we are going to install this <coughs> Asus Tough Gaming B65 or B650M Plus Wi-Fi motherboard. It's a micro ATX motherboard. It uses an AM5 socket processor and it has four slots of DDR5 memory, two PCI Express video slots that. Either you can have X16 or two X8s. I don't even know if you can even do, you know, Crossfire X anymore or anything, so I'm not even sure why there's two, but there's at least one PCI Express 1X on there, and we actually have two M2 drive sockets on this thing. Uh, it also has a Wi Fi antenna, some wires, this is the Wi Fi antenna. You pull this open, and you have the motherboard in there, and this bag, it's not easy to remove. So yeah, I'll remove it and show you it. Okay, well, I'm leaving this stack for your bag for at least now, but it came with an actual manual, um, certificate of reliability. These are like little pad things. These are screws. It has a sticker pack that I can show you in a second. This is the rest of the box packaging. So it came with stickers. So I already started putting everything. Like us say that one right there. This one right there. That one there. And yeah, the back panel has one too. There's even more stickers to put on there if I want to. Um, so. Maybe I'll eventually do that, or maybe this will just go back in here and never be seen again. But we have this motherboard ready for action. Um, I always recommend leaving everything in your static bag anyway. But yeah, we'll get that thing situated. Uh, first, we're going to do some uh, installation of m2 drives and just kind of looking like it's difficult so it's out of the static free bag we got the drive that we're going to put in there so it's going to go right here underneath this heat sink and i'm going to read up on it and see what i need to add i can actually have two of them on there 
if I wanted to. But we're just going to have one. Um, I already kind of prepared it for memory. I don't want to put the memory in it until it's in the motherboard the case anyway. But you can see that there's plenty of SATA plugs on the side here and one here. Um, I'm going to try to figure out which... Yeah, one of these is actually... Oh, that right there is a USB 3 on this one. I kind of wish they were consistent with these stupid wires and stuff. Like, most of them are on the bottom, like as you see. I do miss having power switch and a little code reader, but I guess that's old. We don't do it anymore. So we'll get that. Well, I'll show you it going in that thing. Once I get that situation. Okay, so... It's a little tiny guy. It will go into that plug and I guess it just sits on top of that little pad right there. Uh, the, the heat sink right here has this double sided tape on it that has to be peeled off. And I will get that in there. I, uh, it might be complicated. So, how about I'll just show you it finished? Okay, well, it's installed. Can barely tell it's even there, but we know it's there. I don't know. Maybe you can see it below. But yeah, the I took the tape off the primal paste, and it was like a little lock, right? The screw. Yeah, I just slide over the thing, and the heatsink just goes right on. So maybe it does it with that one too. I didn't realize how small they were. Oh, you can kind of see it from here. Maybe if I have my light. You can kind of see it's right there. Hopefully it's in right. It's kind of hard to tell. I mean, I can kind of see it better than the camera can. So, oh wait, I'm not looking in the right place. Like right about there. So as long as it's all plugged in right, it should be fine. So this just has to go into that. And... We got the tripod set up for you, so we're going to do that right now. So this isn't the easiest because I got to somehow ground myself to things. Just ground myself to this computer here, grab the motherboard by the edges, re-ground myself to this guy. Now this. Just stand up like that. That wasn't too bad. Maybe add some light to the situation that I thought I still had. We got eight screws ready for action. So yeah, the idea is try to ground yourself to places. Get a good grasp on the motherboard. Put it where it needs to be. Try to line up to the holes and start bolting that guy in. You don't have to snug them too much at the moment. So we tighten all these screws. There's eight total screws holding this motherboard one. no easy task because everything's black and when it falls let's say the screw decides to not go where it goes you can't find it we got it all in there okay so the processor we're putting in is this AMD Ryzen 9 7800X um, we gotta get it in that socket and we have to take um, I guess there's black brackets off and change them for different ones so the thermal right cooler fits on it. So we'll probably do both of those at the same time. 
Okay, so we gotta get this guy on there. We'll open up the package. Ah, do I want to? I don't know. The better is to return it and just get that 700. It's not the X. Yeah, that's why I picked it up. It's the X one wants to overclock itself. All this packaging. All this little CPU. Bring myself against the back. It's a nice little badge. It's not too bad. Flips it down. Okay, so we got that ready to be installed. So first, since it's a one of these fans. So you just leave that on there. Don't even take it off. Uh, it should just pop itself off, as they tell you. Ground yourself to the side of the case. That's really what you need. Grab it by the edges. If you can get the edges at all. If it wants to come out of the thing, that'd be nice. Okay, there we go. So it has these pads on the bottom. There's obviously an uneven look to it, and um, there's a line in the middle. So we're looking at this way. Yeah. We think it's that way. No, it has to be because it's facing the right way. Just do it right there. Diamond arrow. I don't know if you can see the arrow, but we will zoom in on that. Try to zoom in. Okay, so there's an arrow right there, and then there's an arrow on the corner. This should just go on like so. Press it down with the lever. It should pop that finger off. Hopefully it doesn't get in the way like it did. And then you just lock it in. That's it. Should be nothing else to do there. This shouldn't have to mess with it. Shouldn't have shifted or anything. It should be tight. Check things just to make sure. But other than that, it should be fine. So, yeah, um, we gotta change these screws because the thermal right cooler. So I'll show you in a second. I don't think I showed you yet. So before we even do anything else to the CPU, we have. The Firmal Right Peerless Assassin. It is a two fan cooler. Decided to get because I never really had any luck with the water cooling. Um, it just don't seem to be, you know, a run and forget kind of thing. Unless you get something really nice, like, you know, a full system. But it has two 120 fans that are black. It has this big giant cooler. All its attachments. It is a Dokuma that requires a lot of hands. It's in a big, pure generic packaging. has six P pipes on each tower. Yeah. We're gonna get that guy in there, but we're gonna put the RAM in there first because the RAM is kinda underneath it, so we're just gonna put the RAM in before that. But we will put the screw stuff in. Screw stuff is in this. So we got the screw stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure we only need like this is AM4. The AM4 screws. And over here. We also need brackets over right here. So we'll get that stuff in there. Uh, these other brackets are for something else. Um 
This is a frontal paste because they give you frontal paste with it instead of like, you know, making you have to fend for yourself. But yeah, we'll just unscrew those guys with the screwdriver to somewhere that I don't know where it is. But let me just put this back in the stand. Okay, so we got the CPO on, but the heat sink requires different brackets. So we gotta take these ones off. There's already a back plate, so what's nice about AMD is that, well, the motherboards are making for AMD. At least put a back plate on there already. So you don't have to worry about that being there. Let's take these old pieces and just put them in the box with the motherboards so you can have them. But what kind of goes on here is these little pink guys. And we'll leave these face this way. So you're always grounded to the case. Or just hold on to the case with one hand. I don't know, this is easier. You may think. But I'll get this one on first. There's a difference between AM4 and AM5. Well, AM5 is an LGA, it's not a finger ray like the other ones. So, that's it. Everything else is kind of compatible when it comes to heat sinks, which is nice because Intel wouldn't do that. Intel would make it so you gotta have like a whole different thing every time, every socket. Maybe we drop things. Get the idea. I got that guy out. Put this one in also. Oh wait. Put these on. Put this guy here. And like I said, the RAM should go in before the heat sink because I don't know. I just do it that way. There was a time that you were able to do it the other way because these things were smaller. It wasn't wires and stuff like that. It's really nothing to this, it just works. So. Does it seem to be right? Yeah, it's right. Get the memory in. Memory. I showed this before. It is 38 gigabytes. 4800 megahertz or gigahertz. No, it's 4800 megahertz. Vengeance. Corsair. As far as their memory goes, they usually do a pretty good job with the memory. This is one of the few RAM sticks that you can get though that doesn't have stupid colored crap on it. So yeah, you're not going to see any colored stuff off of this stuff. Uh, we'll be careful with this too, with static. So we can get it out of the package. The one silly thing about memory is the packaging. thing okay. so there's a um, a different level for each and you can just kind of look at it above it won't line up the other way this time I don't think so yeah so it would always be a little bit off one way or the other Let's slide it in there it's in its place. Make sure the middle is where it's supposed to be. Just press it back. Ah, yeah. Should do a nice firm clip. So I guess you can look at the little boats. I might tell you something. 
I'll notice I'm using the gray sockets. Because you should use the gray sockets first. There. So we got the member in there. The first thing we need is the motherboard connector, Bohemoth cable. Since we know that the connector is about right here where the USB 3 went through, so we'll get that this up there. Uh, what else is going out there? We have the Molex cable. We have this thing. Okay, so this guy. And it's like this guy, I gotta go right to here and get stuffed up in this opening, which isn't gonna be easy to do one handed, but I can show you it when it's situated. Because there's no, there's two of them, right? There's, yeah, this guy. I think it's right here too. And yeah, we'll do that. And I'll bring you back. Okay, so that's plugged in. You can barely see it in this darkness. There's two plugs, so we got the four pin and an eight pin. So now we gotta plug in that. That's the easy one, that's actually pretty easy. Okay, so that's on. It's definitely hard to get on there. Okay, so got all these little I.O. connectors on. You know, the front panel connectors. It's hard to really see them, but you know they're uh, down there. That's the front panel audio headphones. USB 3.0, motherboard, motherboard. So what are we gonna do with this CD-ROM up here? We gotta connect that too. Okay. So all the wires are connected and they're under control in the back anyway. <coughs> I wrapped the, <coughs> the video car cable underneath there. The fan cables are all right in one spot, so I can just unplug them and clean them when I need to. Uh, the power cables. <coughs> yeah. Let's say that one step closer. Okay, so we've got the stuff laid out. For both fans, we've got the clips to hold the fans. We even got the splitter cable, in case I want to use it, but... With this motherboard, we have two headers. We got a CPU and the brown and gray plug that you see in the middle. There. One of them is CPU optional, and one is CPU fan. So we're going to use CPU optional on the inside and CPU fan on the outside. Okay, so it looks better to me. But yeah, we have this. Got all 70% rubbing alcohol so we don't take any paint off of stuff. Safe place. And just, you know, wipe off the surface. Just make sure there's no fingerprints. That's basically it. It shouldn't be an issue with a brand new one, you know, like a brand new one is pretty clean already. Just make sure it's dry and everything else. Keep the rag because you're going to use it again. Okay, so we're going to use um, Firmal Right Firmal Grease that came with the heat sink. We use this to spread. And yeah, just grab yourself the side of these because it's easier. Um, I kind of do it a different way than other people, maybe. Uh, just try to get it kind of like in the middle. In the case of, like, you know how you see, like, these, um, open areas that are weird? We're gonna leave it like that for now. And we're gonna spread it with this guy. This is a little bit easier when it's smaller. And I just kind of, like, start it. Try to get it to spread. Okay, so I smoothed it out a little bit. I got it pretty even around the thing. The corners aren't so important. Okay, so I just need a screwdriver. Since this is just screws. 
Uh, it has a little bit of an offset to it, so we kind of want the, you know, this up. I don't know if you can tell it's higher. It's also that. That has to come off. Warning. Please peel it off. Look at that. Ooh. Okay, so. Let's put this over there. So getting started is not maybe the easiest task because you want to kind of line up with those screws before it touches the heat sink of the processor. It's kind of not in my head. Get one screw on. Okay, so we're out of the stand. You see, there's these screws. Literally, just tighten the screws a couple of turns each time. Try to one turn at a time. Let's we'll say one, two, three, four, right? And it's hard to see because I can't see, but one, two, three, four. It's one full turn on the screw. Has to be tight. Actually, you want these screws to bottom out. So just keep tightening it until they bottom out. So they should bottom out pretty quickly. And that was the easy part. That's done. Obviously, nowhere close to where that one was. That's done. So, when you feel like they stop, that's where they're done. That should be good. Okay, so now we're going to install the fans. So, you got to figure out where the fans go. So, there's just two headers that are almost impossible to get to. Um, what did I say? I want the option fan to be the first one, so we're, we'll have to figure out. That um, they use these clips. So what I want to do with the fans wired I want it here. So it's like this. You know, that might be fine. We'll do it like that. So they're like this. So you got that one and the other one. They're nice short cables. I, I kind of like that. Why can't every heat sink manufacturer do that? Well, even for one, I didn't do it with the other one. But, you know, it makes it easier to wire them. So we've got to get the clips on. The clips are the fun part. And actually, clipping it in is probably something that I'm better off just not even bothering to show you. Because it's so pain. So it's going to be this way, right? So these go here. So if you look at the clip, they face this direction if you're going to you know to the top of the heat sink so you got that one there and you have the other one this way now this is what from a right is notorious for these little paper clips so we'll see how long this takes 
got one fan zone. <sighs> what was that like? It's been a full minute of getting that on there. The other fan is going to be facing the same way. That way they're both kind of like perfect loops, you know? I'll just finalize it and then we'll connect the cables. I'll show you the cables connected. Okay, so they're in. There's connectors. Jeez. They are just... You may think they're in a good spot because they're close by, but... but yeah. I kind of recommend putting the wires on first. Starting with the rear one. Get the rear fan on there. Get the front one's wired on there. Get the front fan on there. That's how you get that thermal right. Imperial Assassin 120 on there. And you guess what's next? The video card. Okay, so here we have the RTX 3060. Let's see if I can get out of here. So it's out of one box. And it has this nice little felt packaging. Some foam. And there we go, we got the video card. It's a three fan video card. At least it's in a stack free bag and the phone. Uh, fall. Okay, so we have stuff with it. It came with a little, looks like a booklet of some kind. Um, speed setup. I guess that's for. Uh, it's just a whole bunch of languages. That's what I see. I guess that would help to set up maybe the army crate. I got this warranty paper. I got this thank you card. Yeah, almost everything had a thank you card. Um, I got. Certificate of Reliability. That came with a little card. You know, like a Pokemon card. Uh, this is a Tough Gaming. This is three stars. No stickers. I don't see any stickers or badges to put on the computer. But anyway, that's what's in the box. Put the phone back in here, so it's just a little easier. As it's hard to get this out with one hand, so hold on a second. Okay, so it's out of there. Not really easy to hold on to. Definitely heavy. Like it's almost as heavy as the CPU core. Has a nice little back plate, kind of like what the 3050 has. It's a little longer. Um. It has one power connector that I saw, and I swear I saw it. Yeah, right here. So it makes it a little easier to connect the, you know, power supply. Yeah, well, we'll get this guy in there. Try to unwrap it, or I get out of the packaging. Yeah. So, one more to put that in. Okay, so we have the video card ready to go. Took all the a whole bunch of like clear plastic over everything. The back, the front, the top. Yeah, there's a. I don't know if you can see the logo. There we go. So we got the logo. Asus logo. Um, I also like the point that it glows on the top right. On that piece. So there's lights in there. But we'll just get that guy in there. Sorry for the foot. So we got the screwdriver ready. Ground ourselves. Or at least discharge ourselves. It's a big card, man. Big. And we'll just make sure we're there. Get this out of the way. So you don't really want to hold on to the circuits. At least you don't have to really worry about holding on the circuits when you have a back plate. You didn't have usually. So getting it into the socket. And the key 
here. Couple of screws to go on. It's really not much room. We'll see how cool that guy stays when it has like absolutely no room at all. There's really nothing there. I guess that air could get there and help it. Yeah, we'll see what, how this works. Um, anyway. If it stays cool, it's fine. Now we need to get this screw here. Display port monitor to use. All those display ports on there. Why you think to hook this guy? There's like three display port cables. That means what? Six monitors going to hook this guy? Plus the HDMI cable. That's why I put that where it was. But obviously, this is probably flipped the wrong way. So now I just got to hook this cable. Okay, so now I gotta put the the cable on. I actually had to flip the guy over. And yeah, the 350 is the other direction. So when you get one video card, they seem to just never do the same. But there, we got that on. Okay, so now it's standing up. Everything's in there. I was thinking of using a brace for the video card, but I don't think it's that heavy. It does have screws in the front to kind of make a brace work, but yeah, this Antec thing that I bought, it's kind of an idea, but I had to still fabricate something to screw into the front of it, maybe out of aluminum or something. So I think this is the end of this video clip segment and um, in the next video it will be installing the operating system again this thing moving well let's just take a look at it with the, the side door while we're while we're here so we got the side door that we can one hand on there surprisingly We got a nice reflection of the bedroom. But I'd say that, yeah, it came out pretty good. So let's see if it runs. But that'll be the next video because I have a feeling that this video is really long already. Okay, so right now I'm doing a bias update. Make sure the bias is updated. Um, yeah, I guess we'll just do a preliminary make sure it turns on thing, even though the video is probably beyond an hour right now. But once that's done flashing, we're going to see what goes on. Okay, so the light turned off. I don't know how many minutes that was, maybe five minutes. I don't think it was that long, but... It's sure seen long. So before I even just turn it on without a screen or anything, I'll just do a screen. Make sure we got our connections back into place. We'll even just take this guy out there. Turn it off. <laughs> so there's this plug that it's unplugged because the fans are Look at the USB drive. Goes away. Turn it back on. So let's see what it looks like. So all we really have is just the light of the video card. There's actually no lights from the motherboard. 
so it's probably just like stopped there's no beeping because there's no you know speaker up to it as you see the video card glues it's very hard to see with the phone and there's just that one light there so there's a red light so what does the red light mean does that mean it's no there's a white light whatever that means As far as we know, it's turned on. <laughs> what does the white light mean? There's a yellow light, a red light, it's just restart. Or, I don't know. Let's get a look at the color code thing. Okay, so we don't know what the code of the lights mean. This thing's showing that light is blue, but I see white and yellow. I think one's like the CPU, or I don't know what that means. I still don't know. I was looking for it, but yeah, we got it. Seems like it's running. We don't know if it has video or doing anything. So I want to do it in the next video. But yeah. Anyway, this is that BMS guy, and thanks for watching.